the Sufi pole is one of the most glorious and famous concepts in Sufism. It designed the spiritual caliph after Prophet Muhammad, so not the four political caliph after Prophet Muhammad. The, all the Sufi are Sunni, so they respect the four Khalifa Abu Bakr, Omar, Uthman, wa Ali. But the Paul is the spiritual caliph of God, not political. So this is the spiritual hair of Prophet Muhammad and the light of the gnose. The pole is in the hierarchy, Sufi hierarchy, the Sheikh of the Sheikh, the chief of all the awliya, of all the saints. It's the highest rank in the Sufi hierarchy. It's like the center of the spiritual world. The function of the pole and the role of the pole will never end until Mahdi, Imam Mahdi and the return of Jesus. It means when one pole die, another replace him. So it's like the Olympic torch. When one die, he pass the torch to another pole. So the pole is never absent on her earth. He is always present and the chain, spiritual chain of the Tariqa Qutbiyya, the spiritual path of the pole is composed of about 45 shujur, 45 spiritual masters who are pole from Rasulullah until the Mahdi. The last Sufi pole will give the last torch to the Mahdi salam. So the goal of this video is to give some clue to find the pole of the time. First of all, the pole must be visible and appear and be very visible one time a century to be manifest like the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, saying that Allah will send one time a century a man that will renew the, uh, his religion. But it doesn't mean, means that the pole is only present one time a century. We can compare the pole like a well. The well is sometime on the sea, on the surface on the sea, and is visible for everybody. And sometimes the well is under the ocean and nobody can see it. So in the spiritual chain, among the 45 great poles, some of them were visible at least one time a century, like Sayyidina, for example, Abdul Qadir Jilani, who was a very visible pole, or Sayyidina Abul Hassan al-Shadili. And some of them were very discreet and secret. And for example, Sayyidina Abdel Salam Inu Mashish had only one disciple. And his disciple was Abul Hassan Shadili. So Abdel Salam Inu Mashish was alone in his mountain and was not visible like a well hidden under the sea. So to find the Sheikh Paul, you should not listen to a disciple that say that his share is the pole. But you must dig the silsila, the chain, and look for the pole by the pole. It means the Sheikh Paul will say it in his poem or in his famous sentence. The Sufi are Sunni, so they accept the four Khalifa, Sayyidina Abu Bakr, Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab, Sayyidina Uthman and Sayyidina Ali, anu wa rida, and they respect this order and that they are, they are four political Khalifa, the four first. But most of the Sufi path 
like 70% of them have a lineage starting with Sayyidina Ali Karama Wajhu. Except the Tariqa Naqshbandiya, which lineage starts with Sayyidina Abu Bakr. But most of the great Sufi master that was officially Paul of the time, like Sayyidina Jafar al-Sadiq to Sayyidina Abdul Qalajlani or Sayyidina Abu al-Hassan Shadili, have the lineage revert to Sayyidina Ali. So we can conclude that Sayyidina Ali was the first pole after the Prophet Muhammad, the first gate, the first spiritual door of Allah. This famous hadith from Muslim and Bukhari is like Rasulullah sallallahu that teaching to Sayyidina Ali Karama Wajhu, the first pole, the first Rauf, how to organize the khilwa of the pole. The khilwa is the room where the pole will uh, guide his disciple and will uh, teach al ism al adam the supreme name of God. How to invoke the supreme name of God? First, by la ilaha illallah and secondly, by the name Allah. So in this hadith, Sayyidina Ali Karama Wajhu asked to the Prophet Sallallahu O Messenger of Allah, guide, guide me to the way, show me the shortest way to the presence of Allah and the easiest way to worship and the best path for Allah, Almighty and Exalted. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi answered, Ya Ali, you must continuously be invocating Dikrallah silently and aloud and Sayyidina Ali replied Ya Rasulullah all people do dhikr la ilaha illallah give me something special the Prophet said Ya Ali the best of me and all prophets before me have said this la ilaha illallah if all the sky and the earth were placed on one side of the balance and la ilaha illallah on the other la ilaha illallah will be heavier, heavier. Judgment day will never come as long. And then Sayyidina Rasulullah said, Ya Rasulullah, close your eyes. Uh, cl uh, Rasulullah said, Close your eyes, Ya Ali, and listen to me and invoke La ilaha illallah. And he said it three times La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah. And judgment day will never come as long as there is people on this earth saying La ilaha illallah. Then the Prophet ﷺ repeated with a loud voice. And at the end he said, Ya Ali, the hour will not come until people also say, Allah, Allah. So it's that like Sayyidina Rasulullah was teaching, like I said, the khilwa and how to lead the disciple to the complete spiritual path by the Ismail Adam Allah Allah <laughs> Sheikh Abu Hassan Shadili who lived in the 13th century changed the history of Sufism by saying in the book of Ibn al-Skandari Lataif Minan meaning the subtle mystical sign he said the pole, the Qutb will not going out from Tariqa Shaduliya until the last hour the last hour so before Abu Hassan Shadili it was very difficult to find the pole that could uh, move from one country to the other by a very difficult way for example Sayyidina Abdul Qadir Jilani gave the secret gave the Paul uh, Kursi to Sayyidina Abu Median al Rauf from Tlemcen in Mecca in uh, just 15 days uh, relation.
by a very short meeting of two weeks. So, the secret of Saint Abdul Kajilani moved very secretly and it was very difficult to know where was the secret after Abdul Kajilani. So, from Sayyidina Ali, the first Paul, to Sayyidina Abul Hassan Shadili, it's not easy to spot and to find the Paul. So, from Ali, it was certainly after him, the great Imam of Ahlul Bayt, Al Hassan or Al Hussein. We don't really know who was the Paul. And then until Jafar al Sadiq, who was the great Paul of Sharia and the great Paul of Sufism. He was the Imam of Sayyidina Imam Malik and Imam Abu Hanifa for the Sharia and he was a super great charismatic Sheikh for Sufis so he was certainly the Sheikh of his time. Alayhi salam wa may Allah give the agreement to all the spiritual masters I courted. Then the secret moved to Kharastan to Iran so between Jafar al Sadiq and Sayyidina Ali al Rida, anu. and Ali al Rida was the last great Imam of Ahl al Bayt because his son, his successor, was only seven years old when he died. After him, the secret of the Paul moved to Iraq with Sayyidina maybe Ma'ruf al Karhi, who was the doorkeeper of Ali al Rida, but we don't really know how he re received the secret or if it was him or maybe Saria Sakati or the great Junaid al Baghdadi. Saria Sakati was the heir of Maruf al Karhi and Junaid al Baghdadi was the nephew of Saria al Sakati and his disciple. Junaid al Baghdadi was so important in Sunni Sufism that is considered as the father of the Sufism, like the four Imam for the Sharia. His nickname was the Imam of the two orders, as he was also a great Shir in Sharia. And he was considered as the father of the Sufis, as he was the first to organize the Sufis as a tariqah, as a order. And he also uh, wrote a lot of books to organize the vocabulary of Sufism. The precise terminology of Sufism like Fana, Extension, Baqa, uh, Living, uh, Eternity in, in Allah, etc. After Junaid al-Baghdadi, we know that Sayyidina Abdul Qaljilani was the great Paul of his time. And between him and Junaid, maybe four or five spiritual masters. Sayyidina Abdul Qaljilani was one of the most influential and charismatic Sufi Sheikh of all history and we know this famous sentence saying this feet, my feet is on the neck of all the saints of this time, of all these awliya and all the awliya when they heard this uh, sentence they all approve and agree, agree. like Sayyidina Muhyiddin Shishti or Ahmed Rifai, they all agreed that Sayyidina Abdul Qadijilani was the pole of his time. After Abdul Qadijilani, the secret moved to Andalusia with the Andalus and Algerian Sheikh Abu Median Al Rauf. He met Sayyidina Abdul Qadijilani two weeks, like I, I said it, in Mecca. To understand the statue and the rank of Sayyidina Abu Median, we must know that the great Ibn Arabi was in extinction in Abu Median. He was loving him so much. He wrote so many poems to express his love for Abu Median. So Ibn Arabi was not a Qutb, was not a Paul. He wasn't the highest rank of Sufism. After Abu Median, the secret moved to Morocco with Sayyidina Sheikh Abdel Salam in Umashish, the group of his time. So, like we said, Abdel Salam Numashish was alone in his mountain and he was the Sheikh of Abul Hassan Shadili. Between Sayyidina Moulay Abdel Salam Numashish and Sayyidina Abu Median, there is one Sheikh. 
So then, like we said before, Sayyidina Abul Hassan Shadili changed the history of Sufism and said, like we can find it in the book of Sayyidina Ibn al Skandari, Lataif Minan said, the Qutb, the pole, will not go out from Shaduliya until the last hour. It means that it will be easier to find the pole. It will not like, for example, like Sayyidina Abdul Qajilani gave like secretly to Abu Median the secret in Mecca. And even few disciples maybe knew it. And after Abdul Qajilani, there was no renewal in the Qadir Qadiriya Tariqa. In the Tariqa Shaduliya, there will be different tips to find the new pole, the hair. For example, first, the, the hair, the deceived that will be the new sheikh, will have the authorization to give the Isma Adam the supreme name even when the sheikh is still alive. The hair will be allowed to guide some disciples even during the life of the former sheikh. Another tip is that the hair will change the name to show the renewal and that he is the new sheikh of the tariqa. So that's why the tariqa shaduliya is the tariqa that changed the most the name of all the tariqa. Like for example, Zahurqiya is also shaduliya, Fasiya is also shaduliya, Dakawiya is also shaduliya, or Alawiya is also shaduliya. The name doesn't change each time a pole die, but at least one time a century. To give some clues and tips to know where is the pole of the time. So if in a Shaduliya Silsila you see many succession from the father to the son and to the grandson and keeping the same name, it's a really bad a sign and it means that the secret left and that kind of spiritual path or tariqa become only for baraka but not to achieve the complete spiritual path so abul hassan shadili was a very visible pole calling people to come to the pole of his time so he was from Morocco and then moved to Tunisia and then to Egypt. Then his heir was Abu Abbas al Mursi, who is buried in Egypt in Alexandria. Then, still in Egypt, Sayyidina Ibn Atala al Skandari had a great role in the Shaduliya Tariqa. He structured the Tariqa Shaduliya has Shaina Abu Hassan Shadili didn't write a lot. So Ibn Atal Skandari wrote a lot like the Hikam and many other books. Few spiritual masters after there was Ali al Wafa with the Wafa order and his father Muhammad al Wafa. Very famous. So the pole was still in Egypt and then moved toward Morocco with the famous Sheikh Ahmed, Ahmed Zahrouk, who was a pole in the Maliki school and also the pole of his time for Sufis. Then the pole was still in Morocco with the Fassi family from Mohammed el Fassi and then three or four great spiritual masters who remained in the same family from father to uncle or to nephew. And then for the 18th century, the great Moroccan master, Sheikh Al-Arabi at darqawi Darqawiya for the Tariqa at darqawiya This Tariqa gave birth to, very, to two very strong branches of the Taqawiya. After Sheikh Darqawi, two very strong branches appeared in Algeria, one with Sheikh Mohammed Belqaid, that was a very charismatic sheikh and we can see in the photo with a sheikh al sharawi mutawakil sharawi who was his disciple and was one of the most famous sharia imam of the 20th century 
but the pole of the time for the 20th century was in the other branch, not this one. The other branch from from Sayyidina Ahmed al Halawi from the Tariq al Halawiya, who was the disciple of Sheikh al Buzaydi. <laughs> Ahmed Alawi was born in 1867 in Mustaghanem in Algeria and he was the last visible pole of Sufism. I will put a link of the video of his life in the description. The first sign that Sheikh Ahmed Alawi was the pole of his epoch was that his teaching was entirely based on the invocation of the supreme name, the Isma al -Dham. Like we saw in the hadith that Prophet Muhammad taught this name to Sayyidina Ali, the first pole. And this supreme name is a method to invoke the name Allah. The second sign is that the pole, one time a century, must have a worldwide influence. And Shia Ahmed Alawi spread it, his tariqah, in very strong countries like Tunisia, Morocco, Libya, Syria, and even until Europe. The third sign is that one time a century, the Sheikh must clearly express that he is the pole of his time, or maybe also that he can say that his Sheikh was the pole of his time. So, for example, the most popular and famous sentence is Sayyidina Abdul Qajilani saying this feat is on the neck of all the saints of this time and all the saints of that time approve this sentence like Sayyidina Shishti or Sayyidina Al-Rifai. Few generations after Abdul Qadir Jilani, Sayyidina Abdul Hassan Shadili was clearly expressing in public saying come to the pole of this time. That kind of words are not arrogant words because that those men of God, Awliya Allah, don't speak by their ego, but they speak by inspiration of God, by God directly. So Sheikh Ahmed Alawi said about himself in his poem, Ana wahid fi zaman. Ana farid fi watni. It means I am the one in this epoch and I am unique in my station. Unique in this ep epoch because the pole is only one in each epoch. In an other poem, he said, Ana lup al iman, ana dini. It means I am the heart of the faith and I am the pole of the religion. So he use, uses the word pole, Qutb. So it's a proof that he is uh, calling himself as the pole of his time. And another one is said in another poem and Qasida, he said, Sarah Yarawi, Bismil Alawi, Ba'da Daqawi, Khalifa Allah. It means, O oh singer, sing for Al Alawi after Al Daqawi, who was the pole of the 19th century, has the Khalifa of Allah. So Khalifa, it means the spiritual Khalifa uh, in the, of Allah. So it means the pole of the time. <laughs> Very hard question after Shia Ahmed Alawi, where did the secret go? Where is the pole now? 
it's not an easy question because after Shah Ahmed Alawi, many great Shuyukh was outstanding and succeed to Sheikh Ahmed Alawi. And the difference between them is not obvious. So now we are long after the death of Sheikh Ahmed Alawi, so we can see the lineage after the first generation, the second and the third, to see how did it uh, uh, evaluate, evolute. So for example, we know that when the lineage come from son to the son, to the grandson is a very bad sign and it means that the secret is not here anymore. So that's what happened in Algeria, for example, from the heir of Shia Ahmed Alawi in Musta Ghanem, Shia Ada Ben Tunis, who was the heir in the Zawiya, the Mover Zawiya. After him, when he died, this is his uh, son Al Mahdi Ben Tunis who succeeded him. And then when Al Mahdi, Sheikh Ahmed Mahdi Ben Tunis died, it's the Sheikh Khaled Ben Tunis, the grandson of Sheikh Ada Ben Tunis, who succeeds. And Sheikh Khaled Ben Tunis confessed himself that he succeed uh, to his father. He was uh, 25 years old and very surprised to be elected as the, the heir of, the prof, of the, his father. As he came from UK, and was a student that was following the Western way of life. So even his religious life wasn't very rigorous. So it's, it was obvious that he could not be the new Sheikh. But he became it for administration, administrative reason. The Zawiya, the Sufi place, had to be irritated by the son, by blood of Mahdi Ben Tunis, for administrative reason, not spiritual reason, and even the Sheikh Ahmed uh, Khaled Ben Tunis doesn't have the sign of a saint, uh, accomplished master, and himself, he always said that he's even not a Sufi, like a perfect Sufi master. He's more a conference speaker that goes on TV show to show and talk about the good aspect of the Sufi spiritual path. Now the Tariqa Alawiya in Mustaghanem by Sheikh Khaled Ben Tunis is more a humanist movement now, but it's not a spiritual path uh, from of the pole. And in Algeria, another lead lineage out of Sheikh Ada was with Sheikh Al Mulut two generations after Shah Ahmed Alawi. So he was a great Sheikh, a great Wali, but since his death in 2004, his tariqa, his spiritual path, had no successor. In Morocco, Sheikh Ahmed Alawi had a great disciple. His name was Sheikh Tahir Al Karkari. But after Sheikh uh, Tahir Al Karkari, it was his son. Hassan al Karkari. So it's not a good sign, like we said, when a sheikh has his hair uh, successor that is his son. After Sheikh al Hassan, it completely collapsed with a man called Fawzi al Karkari. This spiritual path tariqa appeared about in 2010 and falsely claiming that the sheikh was the Paul of the time and claiming that the spiritual path was easy and that they could see the Prophet Muhammad as they were awake every day and that the Sheikh permits to his disciple to see the light of God very easily. But actually many ancient disciples confessed that the Sheikh asked them to lie and that there were many scandals that the Shia was linked to witchcraft and was a kind of wizard. But it's obvious that his face is not lightly like many great Shia of the 20th century and, it ha and that he has to set off this lack of light by folkloric uh, clothes and so many uh, rosary around his neck. He cannot be an educator Shia has 
in this epoch, the Sufis has so many problems to be accepted by the Muslim and is making his tariqa, his spiritual path, to be to wear like uh, clown uh, clothes, like ridiculous clothes. It doesn't help for the unity of the of the of the community. If you remove the folkloric clothes of the shir and just take the face, you will see that his face is dark and not uh, unlighted, like the other great shir of the 20th century. See, for example, here, Sheikh Mahmoud Effendi, just the face is very unlighted and you can see sign of, on his face, like the Quran said, of Wilaya of St. Hood. And here, Sheikh Nazim from Cyprus, also you can see some nur, some light. Here, Sheikh, the pole of the time, Sheikh Belkasem Belkhair, you can see the nur, the light. And here, Sheikh Mohammed Belkhaid, you can also see the light. And here, Sheikh Fauzi Karkari. So he's a normal face. And even if you work with him or he's your boss, you will say he's a normal man. But just with the super clothes, the folkloric clothes, he will tell you I'm a special sheikh. He, he needs to set off the lack of nur, light, and the fact that he doesn't have, he's not a charismatic uh, person. So he has to set off by folkloric uh, clothes and with symbols saying that all colors uh, symbolize uh, the words, uh, the sentence la ilaha illallah, and that there is mystical meaning, etc. Blah blah blah. Then in Libya, there, there was a great sheikh after Sheikh Ahmed Alawi, his name Sheikh El Faituri. But after him, there was no real successor. He died in 1978. Then in Syria, Sheikh Ahmed Alawi sent Sheikh Mohammed El Hashimi to spread the tariqa, the spiritual path. After Sheikh Mohammed Al Hashimi, there was a great Sheikh in Syria. His name was Abdurrahman Sidi Abdurrahman Shaghouri. But after him, there was no real successor. Only some representative, like the Sharia Imam, the Sharia Sheikh, Sheikh Mohammed Al Yaqubi. He's very famous as one of the greatest Sharia Imam, but he doesn't have the sign of a Sufi Sheikh or a Sufi Wali. Uh, he doesn't have some sainthood signs. He's admiring the sense of the past and himself didn't describe a, a genuine or real spiritual path from his own. He's mostly busy with the Sharia path and uh, debates against Wahhabit and Salafist. He often visits other awliya, other saints to give them respect. So himself is not uh, a real saint or real Sufi Sheikh. And the same with another representative, uh, which name is Nur Keller, that is like a Sharia Imam on an intellectual. Actually, the secret of Sheikh Ahmed Halawi went to the Tariqa in Tunisia with Sheikh Mohammed Al Madani. After Sheikh Ahmed Halawi, there were three great shuyukh in Tunisia that affirm that the pole function was in their spiritual path. We found in the Diwan of Sheikh Madani one poem, one verse of poem saying about Sheikh Al Madani, Sheikh Al Madani huwa al Imam, huwa Gayatul Maram, Qutbul Anam, Ya Rabbi Ufok Nukrida. Sheikh Al Madani, he's the Imam, he's the goal of my journey, spiritual journey. Qutbul Anam, the pole of the mankind. Oh uh, Allah, give us the agreement. And after Sheikh Madani, the Sheikh Ismail, Sheikh Smain, 
who was the heir of Sheikh Madani, said about Sheikh Al Madani, Wa anta imamul waqt, wa anta rajauhu, wa anta ladi tuskri kuusen humayrati. Oh Sheikh Madani, you are the imam of this time, of this epoch, and you are the one we are hoping, and you are the imam who gives glasses of wine. And in another poem, the Sheikh Smail said about the Sheikh Madani, Wa lil khayrun rasul kunta khayrun khalifa. And for the best prophet, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you were the best caliph. So it means the spiritual caliph, the Paul. And in another poem, Sheikh Smail said, Naam anta babullah wa anta waliyuhu. Yes, you are the door of God and you are his wali, his saint. The Sheikh Madani died in 1954 and the Sheikh Ismail died in 1994. And after Sheikh Ismail, Sheikh Bilkassim Bilkhair. He said about Sheikh Ismail. In a poem, he said, Sheikh Ismail al Rauf al Rabani, Imamil Insi wal Jani, Kutbul Ihsani, Fil Asrar Wahid Samdani. It means al Rauf, it means the pole, al Rauf. It's another name to say the pole. So, al Rauf al Rabbani, the pole, the holy pole, Imamil Insi wal Jani, the Imam of the mankind and of the jinns, the spirits. Fil Asra Wahid Samdani is unique in his epoch. Qutbul Ihsani means the pole of the excellence. And in another verse, he said, Khalifat Muhammad Ismail had fil Madani. So the Khalifa of Muhammad and he said the name of the Sheikh Ismail. So Khalifa means Qutb, the pole, the door after Prophet Muhammad. Those words are very important because it's in spiritual books and it's by shuyur, by spiritual masters. It's not by disciple. So you should not listen to some disciple because the disciple is not accomplished. He doesn't have a perfect soul and is often still uh, imperfect and speaking by patience and by his ego. But those words are by shuyu, by spiritual masters. So they don't lie except if they are scammers but they are not for most of them. And in another verse, the Sheikh Bil Qasim talk about the Wusul, the arrival in the God's path. And he said, Sirtu minhu bila kaifin nuqtaten anil Wusul. I became suddenly the point of the source of arrival. So it's like he's saying that he is the pole. And in 2005, he visited Paris and we were about 100 person and there was one Naqshbandi disciple who stand up and asked to the Sheikh Bil Qasim, Oh Sheikh Bil Qasim, what do you think about the pole? The Sheikh Bil Qasim answered, Kulul Tarturuk Sufiya Nahnu Ikhwa Lakin in a tariq al usul hunak hunak. So he said, he answered all the spiritual Sufi path, we are brothers, but the path of the arrivals is here, is here. And he used his finger to show the Zawiya, the place where he was. So he was uh, saying indirectly that he was the pole of the time. He died recently in July 2022. And he was the last pole of the Sufi history. The disciple of his Sufi path still waiting for a, 
the heir or the successor, but maybe it will be the Mahdi Muntadar. Because the Paul is the Sheikh that will give the last torch to the Mahdi. And now in our epoch, all the signs passed. So we are not sure that the Sheikh Bil Qasim will have a successor. Allah Alam. <laughs> is the chief of all the saints of the world of his epoch and he can guide the disciple to the complete spiritual path. If all the Sufis of the world tried to find the Paul, it will rise the level and at least all the Sufi will try to have a charismatic master and a real saint even if they don't find the Paul. For example, at the time of Abdul Qadir Jilani, the Paul of the time, there were also other great uh, awliya Sufi masters like Shishti in India or Survardi. So sometimes if the disciple cannot travel, I cannot find the Paul, he can find also a great Sufi, a great Sufi son that it's not the Paul, but at least a real wali and a Shia who have the perfect spirit, the perfect nafs, the perfect soul. But not the son of the Shia or the grandson of the Shia or only a representative of the Shia that it's only a normal man, a normal disciple. Or kind of muqaddam, a devotee Sufi, but it, that is far from the perfect soul and that is far from the level to be a sheikh. But nowadays the Sufis is going around in circle because most of the Sufis try to find a sheikh of their own countries to have the easy way and to have a sheikh of their own culture, not the top. So often we see an Indian Sufi to have a Indian Sufi master, a Pakistani Sufi to have a Pakistani Sufi master, a Turkish Sufi to have a Turkish Sufi master. So we don't look for the top. We look for the same culture and something easy. But in the ancient time, the Sufi were traveling days and days to find the pole of the time. And also nowadays, the problem is that the Sufis became like a fan club of the great ancient Shia like Sayyidina Abdul Qajilani or Sayyidina Ahmed Rifai and the new Shia is often the, Shia, the son of the son of the son and he's just like an historian that know the history of the great Shia of the past and uh, the spiritual path just by theory but himself it is not a great Wali and it's a big problem because people can give him big respect like a saint man and himself he still have an ego so it will not help him to cure his ego and also can have worse problem like money problem corruption scam etc a sufi path is not a dusty museum for example the museum of the history of Sayyidina Abdul Qaljilani who died 1000 years ago. A Sufi path is like a sport top team like Real Madrid who every year think about the new trainer to win the trophy, the Champions League of the year. The most important in Real Madrid is to have an alive trainer that can help the team to win the Champions League of the year, not the Champions League of the past. So for the example, Miguel Munoz was a great great trainer in the 50 and won 5 Champions League. But now nobody think about him 
and we just think to find the trainer of the year to, to, to win the cup of the year like for example Zinedine Zidane but if after Zinedine Zidane the Real Madrid was hired and tech as a trainer the son of Zinedine Zidane Enzo Zidane that hasn't the level of his father the Real Madrid will fall down in the sub league and would disappear of the top level and if after Enzo Zidane it's also his son and after his grandson the Real Madrid will be forgotten in the top level and will become a museum and the grand grandson of Zidane can be a guide of museum but not a top level trainer he would be a guide for the Zidane Real Madrid and this team will be a museum and will not win the Champions League anymore fortunately after Zinedine Zidane it was not his son who was hired to manage the Real Madrid but the great trainer Carlos Ancelotti who is not from the family of Zinedine Zidane and that's why the Real Madrid still remain in the top level and often win the Champions League because it renew his trainer and in the Sufi path it's the same it's not important that my tariqa or my Sufi path represent the superhero the best Sufi share of the history who died 1000 years ago like Abdul Qajlani because now he's dead he cannot do anything for you like for example Maradona is dead now and he cannot do anything for the Argentinian team but imagine if you enter the Argentinian team dressing room and you see that all the players and the trainer all have a book of the history and the advice of Maradona in the hand and the trainer doesn't have his own program and his own training and the training is very light so this kind of team cannot win any trophy because focusing on an ancient past a glory past but not on the present the same if in a Sufi path or in your Sufi path you always talk about a dead sheikh that died 1000 years ago and for the Indian and Pakistani Sufi who may not have the football culture we can explain with cricket also the great team the Mumbai Indians cannot hire after Sachin Tendulkar retired his son or his grandson because they are not equal to him even if they belong to the same family and they cannot hire also just a middle level player so for example for the Shishti spiritual path you cannot follow the grandson of the grandson of the Sheikh Shishti who died 1000 years ago you must find the charismatic Shia that is alive now and the same in Pakistan for the great player Shuaib Akhtar after he retired you cannot take as a captain his son or his grandson the same you must find the Sufi Sheikh of the time a Sufi Sheikh is a function that have a goal it's not a title for the reputation or for the history or for the glory a Sufi Sheikh is like the doctor of the soul so you have to find one doctor that is alive you cannot cure a disease with a book of with the methodology of a doctor that died 1000 years ago the doctor have to adapt to the context of the epoch of the characteristic of the people that change from one generation to the other and the new disease and the new methodology this seat of Sufi Sheikh this throne is a very very hot and sharp throne a very dangerous place and a very very big responsibility it's like a seat a throne that is made with swords so only great awliya great saints that reach the nafs kamil 
the perfect soul can sit on it. And Sheikh Ahmed Alawi, the last visible pole, wrote in his book Minhaj al Qudusiya, the holy inspirations, that Allah on the judgment day will gather all the Sufi masters that teach only for the Baraka. And Allah will take all the disciples one after one and will ask to the Sufi master why did they not finish their spiritual path with majesty and anger. So this role of Sufi master is a very very heavy responsibility. Yeah.